Well, hey, everybody. Uh, over here today, my friends Luke and Holly, and um, among other things, they're getting ready to build an airplane. And uh, Luke is one of my oldest friends. Uh, we go all the way back to junior high, and uh, we went to the same high school together. And then Holly and I went to different high schools together. <laughs> and so um, what we're gonna do today is, in preparation to build the airplane, uh, Luke has a riveting tool set, and uh, we're gonna learn how to put a rivet together to fix these two pieces of metal together. So, uh, Luke, I don't know the first thing about riveting other than you drill a hole, you use another thing. So, <laughs> go ahead and take it away. Sure. So, um, fair warning, I'm learning too. So, I'll probably screw up an awful lot. But, I mean, the idea behind the rivet is, you know, let me get one out. I'll show you. So, this is what we call a solid rivet. Whenever we're riveting, we're going to take this and we're going to kind of squeeze it together to where this end kind of expands and it holds the metal together. Cool. All right, so we have this, uh, this aluminum. It must be either I'm incredibly strong or this is aluminum. Both. I'll take that. Uh, so we have to make a, we have a hole in one, not golfing. <laughs> we need to make a hole in two if I understand it correctly. Yep. Well, we're going to forget that hole because that hole's the wrong size. We're going to neglect that hole. Yeah. There is we're, no. We're using some scrap that yeah. already has some. Okay, so we need to make a hole in both of these. Yep. Okay. And how do we do that? Just a regular drill bit? Yep. Well, it, anytime you do rooting, almost everything's a, a uh, special size. Mm. So this here, um, these are eighth-inch okay. rivets, but you use a. Uh, a number 30 bit. Oh, numbers instead of Yeah, numbers size. instead of rests. Oh. So, but first off, one of the things we've got to do is we've got to get it lined up. We've got to figure out where we want to put the holes at. Okay. So, we'll just, you know, kind of set some holes randomly so that we can work with them. And for this, since we're working on something flat, we can just use, you know, regular punch to set a few places where we want to rivet. So, we'll just kind of pick them up right here. And hope that I don't hit the hole that's already there. Now, when you're actually making the airplane, these are going to be a little, <laughs> little bit more precise. <laughs> I hope. Um, you know, there are regulations for how close you can get to the edges really? of things. You have a certain ratio of the diameter of the rivet to the edge of where you're going to be putting it. Um, so it can get a little more complicated than that. But, I mean, we're just setting the picture. Sure. So now that we've got that, um, we're going to need to hold these two together because these holes have to be perfectly lined up to be able to put the rivet through. Okay. So when we're setting this up initially, we have these, they call Clico clamps. Okay. Uh, and these are cool. You use, these are called Clico pliers, and you use them to just squeeze. The pliers look a little bit like a cherry picker. Yeah, kind of. A little bit. So we'll take this, and we will just clamp these. Oh. On either end. Huh. Now, um, you know, I'm thinking with this small of a piece, it's going to be hard to use the drill press. Okay. So maybe we'll just use the drill to do this. So we'll go through a block. Um, and I, I can tell you, I have a bad memory and a nice scar from holding metal while drilling. So, <laughs> is there some pliers or something I could hold it with? Or maybe I'll go grab some gloves, huh? Oh, if you like. Yeah, I'll Is this where we insert the Jeopardy theme? Probably. So, when you're drilling aluminum, you know, most of the time whenever you're drilling metal, you slow down. Because mm -hmm. you don't know where you're built at. When you're drilling aluminum, you want to go as fast as you can okay. as far as the drill speed goes. Okay. Uh, this drill isn't the best for that, but it'll work. Um, I take one, you can take the rest since you're going to be doing this. Okay. Obviously, the straighter the better. Okay. And these clamps are really holy. Yep. Wow. Okay, I'll try this thing. 
Now, once we get the next hole done, we'll switch one of these out for an actual click up. Okay. You know what? Maybe we're going to do that. Yeah, that'll work. So maybe we're going to do that now because we're kind of running in that clamp a little bit. Oh, okay. So we can switch this now, do you say, to uh... To a Clico. So a Clico is a sheet metal holder, and we use these Clico pliers to use them. So what happens is you see this here, yeah. it's got kind of the profile of the hole that we, um, yeah. we just drilled. And it's got these clamps that when you squeeze it, you just kind of push out. Mm -hmm. You see they've got these little ledges right there oh. that can kind of grab onto things. Okay, so, that, so that's not a permanent... No. Okay. Nope. nope. This is it's just a sheet metal holder. It holds it while we're working on it. Okay. So we can put this Clico in there and it holds the piece of metal together for us. How are we doing? So now we can lose this Clico clamp. And actually now that we've got two holes drilled in it, I should throw the drill block. Yeah, that's okay. We can fix that. <laughs> so we'll put that in there. And now those will hold those. Mm. They'll hold the alignment. Yeah, yeah that will hold the alignment together. so that we can eventually get rid of this clamp here also. But the more you can have anything clamped, the better. Okay. And keep on keeping on. Yep. Joseph Deer Day. Sorry, didn't mean to throw it on you. That's <laughs> alright. But I did. So. Alright, so now we have our four holes through both pieces. Now you'll notice on the bottom of those holes, there are burrs. Yeah. Those burrs are very bad for airplanes. Um, for one thing, whenever you put these two pieces of metal together, you might notice, it's hard to see on this, but there's a tiny little bit of a gap in between the metal. Okay, yeah. Because of the burrs that we created when we drill the holes. And that can lead to, believe it or not, in the right case, a structural failure of an airplane. Oh. Because what will happen is you'll set this rivet, but that gap will still be there. Yeah. So in a long enough timeline, you know, going through the vibrations of light, um, those burrs will eventually kind of wear away, and then they will let that rivet get loose. Yeah. Because it's removed some of the material in between it, which loose rivets cause this. Okay. And this causes metal fatigue cracks in the metal and mm. cracked metal in an airplane is bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So, to get rid of that, we have a deburring tool. It's this handy little thing. This one is from Avery Tool, and I only mention that because my daughter's named Avery. I agree. So that, it's a three-fluted cutter. Okay. That just kind of takes that burr and gets rid of it. So we just take that, put it right there, and we give it a few rounds. Okay. Now you notice it's gone. Yeah. Now there's a tiny little bit of a bevel there. You don't want to bevel it very much at all. You just want to go long enough, or enough to where you get rid of the burrs. Yeah. There. And this is kind of the bane of any home builder's existence because anytime you make an edge in aluminum, you have to deburr it mm. before you put it into an airplane. Okay. So we drill these holes, and so that gives us what four holes. So that's sixteen holes to deburr mm, because mm. you got to deburr each side of it. I got you. So I'll give a couple. You don't have to push very hard. So you're not countersinking because I thought this was a countersink. Yeah, it's it looks like a countersinking, and that's essentially what it is. But we use it for deburring. So I mean, if you push. Hard, hard enough? Yeah. And long enough, you will absolutely countersink this. So I'll go like a 25% normal yeah. strength. Yeah. So this side here, um, you'll notice there's a lot less. So we're going to go extra careful on that side. Okay. And here we're just... yeah, you'll kind of get the feel for it. That's the easy side to start with. Well, there's no real. Yeah. The real version. Maybe you're getting the heavier versions, you got to get rid of it. It gets kind of fun. So I'll come over when you're building your airplane, but I'm too nervous in real life to actually do something that you're going to be flying in. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, they've got a lot of instructions um, on how to detect things like bad rivets. Mm. 
Uh, so all these rivets will go through a bit of an inspection before we can even, you know, okay. fly the plane. So, I mean, I will know, if I have you set any rivets on the airplane, I'll know right straight from the start <laughs> whether or not they're bad. And thankfully, they can be removed. So okay. if we make a bad rivet, we can always take it out and do it again. Well, I appreciate your confidence in me, but I think I'll just be moral support. Maybe comedic relief. <laughs> See, they, here, I'm still feeling something, yep. so I just keep going? Yep, just keep going. There, I got it, okay. Yep. You can always take more off, right? Yep. So as a wood guy, I think that's okay. But as the aircraft guy... Well, <laughs> learning aircraft guy. <laughs> I am no expert on this yet myself, so... But yeah, that looks good. Okay. So now, normally I would have marked these parts to be able to tell which side goes where. Oh, sure. And I forgot to do that. So I'm going to guess and... Yeah, it looks like we got that lined up. Okay. Okay. So now we have to use these Clicos again. And I'm going to let you do that this time. Okay. So now, which one of these <laughs> rivets do I want? Well... Let's go ahead and click it for, together first. Oh, okay. So take the cherry pitter, because that really looks a lot like a cherry pitter. Yep, I can definitely see that. Does yep, it matter just, which one? Oh, uh, it goes. Yeah. Nope, it doesn't. Usually I'll put them uh, a little bit further apart. Yeah. Whenever we get into um, you know, making the plane, you know, there are some kind of general guidelines depending on what type of part you're working on. Mm. That is so cool. And then this one, you say you put them far apart as possible. Yeah, so I would, yeah, I'd put that one all the way on the other side. And so that's how it kind of just sticks out. Yeah, push it all the way through, and there it is. Huh. Yeah, when I first saw these, I thought they were some type of permanent fastener that you had to squeeze. and. So that's kind of how it holds them right there. Yeah, I thought so too. I mean, I always saw pictures of, you know, like Holly was saying earlier, like the Rosie the Riveter. And yeah. you see these things sticking out. And I, I always looked at that and I thought, man. That's a lot of material to push in. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's, that has to be an awful lot of waste just to put in a rivet. Yeah. But I never really realized that they were just sheet holders, that they come out. Uh, okay, so as far as rivet selection goes, there again, we've got guidelines. Okay. So here I've got, this is a kind of a rivet guide that will help me decide which one we want to use. Okay. And there are different numbers on here for the different size rivets. The ones that we're using are uh, fours. Uh, so you can see the part number here is AN470. Yeah. A-4-6. Okay. So the AN470A tells us what type of a rivet it is, tells you know what kind of metal it's made out of, okay. whether it's hard or soft. And the four here uh, tells us the diameter. And the, this is in, this is where I always get mixed up, 30 seconds of an inch. Okay. So it would be four thirty seconds of an inch. Or one eighth. But yeah, or one eighth. But let's make it complicated. Yep. Okay. Well, it, at least they've got, you know, <laughs> we always know, know that that's, you know, in a, a thirty second of an inch. So, okay. Or, okay. I got you. Yeah. Yep. So, and then <clears throat> to make it more complicated, this, the second number here, is in sixteenths of an inch. So six sixteenths. Yep. And common is two, so three eighths. Yep. So that's the length of the rivet. Yep, that's the length of the rivet. And is that length of the rivet that is compressed, or is that the length of the rivet to start? That's the uncompressed length of the rivet from underneath of the shop head to the tip. So whenever we do this riveting, this side of it here, um, they call that the manufactured head. It's, I just misspoke. So it's the length of the rivet from the manufactured head oh. to the other side. And this part here that sticks out, we are going to kind of smash into what we call the shop head. Okay. So, we put that through the hole, and also we want to make sure that that's nice and flat. Okay. And yeah, it looks like you did a good job, too. Well, it's, uh, if you've been riveting as long as I have, you pick up some stuff. <laughs> so here, we know that we're working with a you know, four-size rivet, so we use this rivet gauge here to tell whether or not this is going to be an appropriately sized rivet. Mm -hmm. And that just barely doesn't pass underneath of there, okay. which tells me that we have just barely enough meat on this side of the rivets for this one to do the job. Okay, so it, it wants to touch the gauge? Um, this, These tools here, this one and the other gauge I'll show you, tell us minimum. Okay. Minimum. So if this, so if I take this out here, if I can get it out. 
and I put in the next size down. Which is the five. Which is the five. You see there's a gap there. Okay. So that tells us that's bad. Okay. This rivet isn't big enough to do the job that we want it to By do. By the time you smash it, it won't have the holding power. Right. Okay. Yep, the shop head side of it will be way too small to be able to secure this properly. So we'll go ahead and use this one. Okay. And I'll do the first one here. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to use this. Use the hand tools first. Mm -hmm. This is um, an economy rivet squeezer. So we're just going to take this and put the cup side there. Because you see we've got one side that's got a bit of a dish to it okay. to hold the rivet. And then we've got a flat side that's going to do the smashing. Ah, yeah. Now this will take a little bit of trial and error, but we wanna make sure that we've got that rivet pushed in there flush, and then we just squeeze. Oh. And there's, and there's a rivet. And it's just one squeeze, no. Um, it depends. Okay. Uh, like we're gonna check it here with this rivet gauge. Okay. Uh, you see again, this is it says dash four. So we know that this okay. is for this size rivet. Yep. This hole here tells us the minimum size of that head. Oh. And so if this were to go on there and kind of rattle around yeah. like it would here, sure. then we haven't Too small. we haven't set that rivet hard enough yet. Okay. And this other side of it here tells us the minimum um, height of the, okay. the shop head side. So we want to make sure that that doesn't pass cleanly underneath of that, okay. that hole there. So here we see, number one, this doesn't quite go on there, so we've you, mushroomed it outward you exceeded enough. the minimum on it. Yep, and it also is taller than that minimum there. So this is a good rivet. That's a good rivet, of course. Now, what, um, what else would we expect from you? Well, that was <laughs> sheer dumb luck because I never set this. Oh, so, okay. Um, I had this actually set too hard. So if I would have just kept squeezing, it would have mushroomed it out too far. But I looked at it while I was doing that, and I'm like, eh, it looks like it's just about there. So we'll use this as a guide, kind of. And you can adjust this tool to set the same rivet depth every okay. time. Now, we'll probably have to adjust it a little bit here because, I mean, these things are going to rebound a little bit once you put some tension on it, but... So it's a that. science, but it's also a little bit of an art. Definitely. So there you go. Want okay. to do the next one? Yeah, let's throw a rivet in there. That's the worst thing that could happen. We're not flying this, right? Right. I hope not. <laughs> All right. So I have the Dash 4. It goes in the hole. Check, make sure. No daylight or anything showing through the head, uh, the manufactured head. Then the round head goes on to the manufactured head. Keep my finger out of the way. And you want to, you probably want to be square on the center yep. of the of the part. Yep. Now, also want to make sure that this is kind of pushed up against, because if you let it slide this oh, way, okay. When you start squeezing, it will start squeezing on both sides of your work. Yeah. So you make sure that this is kind of pushed right up against that that shop head, and then just, or the manufactured head. I mean. And then you just give it the old yep. squeeze of Rooney. Once it bottoms out, you're done. Yep, as long as we've got that set properly, yep. And we'll just gauge it then, right, with the tool. So this is the one I did, I think, yep. right? Yep. And we don't quite go through. And as far as that goes, we don't touch bottom. So we met the minimum requirements of a rivet. So we have done a good rivet. Yep. And now we can take this Clico off, right? Yep. And we've probably taken both off, eh? Yeah, we're probably oh. good for this one. Okay. Now, if you want, we can bust out the big guns and we can do that with air. Anything's more fun with power tools, so right. sure. All right, let's do that. Okay. All right, so we did it by hand, and that's cool, but um, we do have a power riveter, so we have the backing, backing bar, bucking bar, bucking bar, and we're going to take the same workpiece that we've been working on, and do what we did by hand, but with a power tool. So, I guess we'll you do the first one because I I don't even know where to start other than pick the gun up. So, <laughs> so the idea with um, you know power riveting is. First off, we've got the rivet gun, which looks an awful lot like an air hammer because that's essentially what it is. 
In fact, you can air, use an air hammer to do this. Okay. And I have in the past, and just not nearly as <laughs> elegant. Nothing as, you're going to fly on. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could. It's just, oh. They're a pain to work with. Well. Um, so this works just like an air hammer. Okay. Uh, so you've got the mass of this puts, you know, force into the rivet. And then that force is transmitted through the rivet into the bucking bar. And, of course, the bucking bar is this giant heavy piece of metal. So this yeah. has a lot more mass than okay. this does. So um, I've got it clamped into a vise right now mm -hmm. just because this is a small work piece and it can vibrate all over the place. But whenever you're in an airplane and you're putting it together, okay. you want that mass to be able to help you set that rivet. And that's, you can hold that with your other hand. So yep. you, you're... yep. So yeah, if you're working on a piece in an airplane, yeah, you'll, you'll hold the bucking bar right behind the rivet in midair and you'll use the rivet gun on the outside. Maybe I can be your, your bucking bar. You can set them. I'll, <laughs> I'll hold the dumb end, <laughs> you hold the smart end. So there again, with this, you want to make sure that we keep some positive pressure up against the, you know, the, the manufactured head and just pull the trigger. Now that is cool. And there <laughs> that it is. is really cool. So where did our, uh, oh, here it is. Gauge one, gauge two. Yep. So there, I, I was actually worried I might have set that a little too hard, but it looks like I did not. So you hit it and that's just a very so feel, that was, go by feel. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot of guys, I mean, whenever you get more experienced, you can probably set that a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with me, I'll go through some test pieces like this yeah. uh, quite a bit. Or, you know, we can set the pressure really low. Okay. Because you can hit it as long as you want. Um, maybe not as long as you want. But, right. yeah. you know, you can always, you know, set the rivet again or push it harder. Right. But once you squeeze a rivet too far, you've got to drill it out and replace it. Yeah. And drilling it out comes with its own, you know, set of concerns. Yeah, because you could... Cool. Yeah, you could you know Wobble mess up the hole. The hole. Or, yeah. yeah, and which you know can be repaired if you if you screw up the hole, you just drill it out to the next rivet size up and put the next rivet size okay. up in. But depending on where you're doing uh, the riveting, you may not be able to do that yeah. because you may get too close to the edges of you know whatever you're working on to be able to be safe. So I guess in my mind's eye, I'm just going to pick this one up for demonstration. I pictured that we would put the rivet. Of course I drop it, why wouldn't I? Um, this way, and that holds a little bit, okay. And then I thought we would buck it, and we, I thought we would buck, make the shop end bucked down, but. There is a, a way to do that, yeah. um, they call it back riveting. Okay. And you don't typically do it with this type of a rivet, you typically do that with, um, with this type of rivet, they call it a flush rivet. So a flush rivet, Let's see, I know I've got one sitting around here somewhere. I just showed you some, didn't I? Uh, it was on that one with the blue tape on it, right? Ah, yeah. So a flush rivet is countersunk into the work that you're doing. So since that's flat, you can put the manufactured head mm. right straight on your bucking bar. Okay, and then mushroom and out then, your Yeah, and head. then mushroom it from this side. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah, that is something that, that can be yeah. done. Uh, you just have to have the right kind of stuff to do it. That's cool. Let's see how mad I can mangle this one. You got, is that one of these is what I want? Yep. All right, so I remember this much. I, uh, I know that's, all right. So now we're, we're good flush down and we are gonna put the shop end on the bucking bar. Oh, yep. and just make and sure, oh, that probably just doing this would help, huh? Yep, and just with everything else, try to keep everything as square as you can. Okay. And keep that positive pressure up towards the gun. And just hit it for about a second, a second and a half. Not enough, I can tell. My, well, my you know, that's a good, Yeah, that's, that's a good example because here we yeah. we can use our tool. And you see, yeah, that yeah. that needs to go a little bit further. Okay. You can always go more. Yep. I'll still do square and positive. Yeah, that's, My, kind of, uh, that's getting there. You build as many aircraft as I have. You <laughs> you pick it up pretty quick. That that's not the worst thing. Now, that's according to the gauge is correct. And I would fly with you, but I would not necessarily be as quick to fly with you if I did the riveting. <laughs> <laughs> if you invite me to fly. Now, I see here, and maybe you do or maybe you don't, 
I kind of messed up the uh, actual surface of the work. What do you do if you do that? I right. put a little bit of a, of a finger. A little bit scratch. of a divot. If it's a little bit of a divot like that, you can a lot of times sand that out um, in a thick enough piece of work. Mm -hmm. But um, in a ruler plane, if we did that on the skin, and I couldn't buff that out to where it's nice and flat, you have to replace the skin. Uh. So. I'm definitely not riveting your aircraft skin. Well, this is why we practice. <laughs> yeah. I've done this myself. I have plenty of plenty of practice uh, pieces of aluminum that I've got half moon shapes all over the place yeah. on. So that's why we practice. Well, that's really cool. Uh, so if I understand it right, because I obviously we're friends in real life, friends on Facebook and the YouTube, but um, when you start to get into the airplane building process, through this uh, company called Vans Aircraft, is that right? Yep. Okay. One of the things that you do is you build a toolbox and as a practice, sort of as a practice project, right? Yep, well, you can. It, you, you can. The, if you buy an airplane kit through them, it will yeah. come with some very simplistic uh, kind of how-tos. Okay. Um, you know, some scrap that you can, can play around with, but this is one of the options that you can get. Um, compared to, I think that I spent 30 bucks on this mm. I think that was the cost of it don't quote me on that <laughs> um, but for the price of it yeah, you get something kind of useful yeah. and you go through an awful lot of the same types of things that you would do when you're building a real airplane yeah so you know this comes you know covered in you know blue plastic that you've got to take off you've got to take all the parts and deburr them uh, like you would on a real airplane um, and then yeah you set the rivets same types of rivets, same types of materials that you would use. Uh, so yeah, you learn a lot of useful skills um, to make the toolbox. And if you got something that's kind of cool, you can that's very cool. actually and, use. And I picked that up when I came into the shop today for the first time. I picked it up and it's aluminum, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting. Um, now, do they, does it come pre-bent and everything, or do you have to break all yeah, that? Yeah, this, this one does come pre-bent. Okay. Um, for the most part, anything that's got like these types of bends in it, okay. you don't have to do that yourself on. On, on their kits. I mean, there are certain kits where you've got to do everything by yourself. Yeah. But uh, one of the advantages of their kits is, for the most part, everything that you get is going to be like pre-punched. All the holes mm -hmm. are, so everything's going to be generally located where it needs to be. Okay. Uh, which makes building it an awful lot easier. Um, you still got to go through and, on most of their kits, do what you call like a match drilling, which is, you know, you line all the parts up, you get your Clicos in, and then you go and match drill the holes to make sure they're all in the exact okay. same place. Then you've got to go through and do what's called final size drilling, um, or you've got to actually ream the holes up to the final mm. size of what they, what's required by the uh, the rivets. Yeah. Um, so there's an awful lot of, you know, clecoing, unclecoing, mm. drilling, uh, deburring uh, that goes into it. But the way that they manufacture the kits, um, an awful lot of people he would think would never be able to build an airplane can yeah. build one. Well, I never thought that you couldn't build an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to, uh, to watch this happen uh, as, it, as it does. Um, you would be the first, probably the only person I know that's ever built their own airplane. Um, but, yeah, this, is, this was cool. The rivets were neat. I appreciate you showing me that and uh, letting me come over and take up time um you know when <laughs> who would have thought back in uh high school metal shop that nine weeks that we did metal shop <laughs> it would turn <laughs> it would turn into one day uh hey luke's building an airplane um and i know you already you help your brother work on his airplane is that yep. correct um that he currently has is already built and flying and things so um pretty neat now i don't know how many people you n know that you can say hey he built his own airplane <laughs> so uh, again, thanks again, uh, Luke and Holly, for letting me come over and, and show me how to do these things. And um, I'll put some links to your YouTube channel and the blog um, in the comments or, or video description section. But other than that, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this useful.